In this video, I'm going to be talking about protein hydrolysis and protein denaturation. They're pretty similar concepts. They have some key differences. And I'm going to start by talking about denaturation. Denaturation is when some or all of the secondary, tertiary, or quaternary structures of a protein are broken or disrupted. This is caused by heat, too much heat with the protein. It could be caused by the presence of acids or bases protein being in an environment that has incorrect pH. It could be caused by poisoned, uh, being poisoned by organic chemicals. I'm just going to write organic or uh, hydrogen, uh, heavy metals, sorry, heavy metals, which would be toxic to the biological environment. And it could also be caused by severe agitation. The um, heat and acids and bases and organic chemicals all break hydrogen bonds in the secondary and tertiary, tertiary structures. So these will break a hydrogen bond. Acids and bases also break a hydrogen bond. Organic chemicals break hydrogen bonds. And agitation does the same as well. The heat could also break hydrophobic interactions. And the uh, agitation could also break hydrophobic interactions as well. Heavy metals tend to break the disulfide bonds or disulfide bridges. When a protein is denatured, it causes the, the secondary or tertiary or quaternary structures of a protein to change because some of these interactions are, are being modified. And then because of that, it does have an effect on the protein's biological function. It doesn't necessarily render it without function, it just changes the way that it functions. Now, the hydrolysis process is something that acts on the primary structure of a protein. And the hydrolysis, the peptide bonds or the amide bonds are broken in the primary structure. Um, and this literally disassembles the protein completely. This is something that happens naturally inside our body. When our body is done with a protein, it undergoes hydrolysis takes that protein apart, separates it into individual amino acids, which are then used by the body to produce new proteins. So the hydrolysis, even though it is completely destructive, completely ruining a protein, is actually a good process. It's something that our body normally does. Whereas denaturation is typically something that we don't necessarily want to have happen. It's not, uh, it's a lot of times it's caused by some sort of external thing taking place. I'm going to show you an example of protein hydrolysis with this very small peptide. We're just going to like kind of look at how hydrolysis would take place. The hydrolysis process requires water. Specifically, it requires one water molecule for every single peptide bond that will get broken. So we're going to be able to come back and put some um, stoichiometry here with this water molecule. It's important for us to be able to recognize where the peptide bonds are located on the um, on the protein or on the, the sequence of amino acids. Remember that every single amino acid has a nitrogen, an alpha carbon, and then a carbon oxygen double bond. And so that right there, what I just kind of highlighted, that's one amino acid unit. And then we have another nitrogen, carbon, carbon, that would be our second amino acid unit. So these are the places where the amino acid is going to be, or excuse me, where the peptide is gonna be taken apart. So knowing that we're going to be breaking two peptide bonds, remember I said we need one water molecule for every peptide bond that we break, we're going to need two water molecules for this process. What I'm going to do is take this little peptide that I made here, and I'm just going to copy its structure and paste the structure down here, and then I'm just going to modify it for, um, for us. So what we are going to do, I'm going to begin by literally breaking, separating the different amino acids at that peptide bond. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze my eraser in there and then just delete that bond just like that. And then what I'm going to do is pull these individual amino acids apart from each other. So these are the three amino acids that we have. 
put some little plus signs in between them so that we know that these are three separate amino acids. Now we do have to finish off these amino acids. We've got some bonds here that need to be completed where the, the peptide bonds were um, once, where they once existed. And those bonds are gonna be completed by portions of the water molecule. It's really gonna be helpful if you can remember the general structure of an amino acid, if you can recognize that we're going to put an oxygen atom on this carbon right here, and it's gonna be negatively charged, that we wanna just sort of copy that same pattern that we see for all amino acids. And then the, um, that, and that would be one of the oxygen atoms from the water molecule. The hydrogen atoms, the two hydrogen atoms, are going to go onto the nitrogen like this just like that, and those nitrogen atoms have positive charges on them. And again, like I said, it's gonna be really helpful if you have you know, a good understanding of the general structure of an amino acid, because we're just putting these amino acids back together. And so this would be the product of the hydrolysis of this particular peptide.